Hey everybody, welcome back. This is video number eight for AP Daily Practice Sessions for AP Computer Science A 2024, the last video in the series. So I'm Rob Schultz uh, from Bellbrook High School in Bellbrook, Ohio. And I'm Tim Gallagher from Winter Springs High School located just outside of beautiful Orlando, Florida. Today, we are looking at 2D arrays. Tim, you wanna kick us off on this one? Here we go. So as Rob mentioned, this question is about 2D arrays. All right, this is the 2023 number four question. As we know, the question uh, number four on the AP exam is always about 2D arrays, and this one's no different. So it says that this question involves pieces of candy in a box, and the candy class represents a single piece of candy. So you'll notice we have this public class candy, and there's only one method that we're going to be concerned with in here. It's this public string get flavor. You'll notice it says there may be other instance variables and constructors and methods not shown, but we don't care. We just know that we can get the flavor of a candy and it's gonna be a string. So then we have the box of candy class and that represents a candy box where the candy is arranged in a rectangular grid, the 2D array. The instance variable of the class box is a rectangular two-dimensional array of candy objects and a location in the candy box may contain a piece of candy or it may be empty. A piece of candy is represented by a candy object. An empty location is represented by null. And you're gonna write two methods of the box of candy class. So here we have our box of candy class. I've circled my instance variable. We're gonna put a big old star next to it as well because we know that's what we're gonna be using, the box 2D array throughout this entire question. We have two methods that we're gonna be implementing here. In part A, we're gonna have that move candy to first row method that we'll be talking about. And then we also have the remove next by flavor method, which we're gonna talk about in part B. So rather than read all this here, let's go right to part A and we'll get into the details of what we're looking for for this first method. So part A is to write the move candy to first row method. And it says that this attempts to ensure that the box element at row zero and column call contains a piece of candy using the following steps. We always want a piece of candy if possible in that first row of our box based on whatever column that we're given. So here's the algorithm. It says that if the element at row zero and column call already contains a piece of candy, well then the box is gonna be unchanged and this method is just gonna return true, no problem there. But if the element at row zero and column call does not contain a piece of candy, then what this method is gonna do is gonna search the remaining rows of column call for a piece of candy. And if a piece of candy can be found in column call, it is going to be moved to row zero. The previous location will be set to null, and this method is going to return true. If we can't find a piece of candy and there's nothing to move up there, well then, otherwise, the method is just going to return false. So remember, we have our 2D array called box, which is a 2D array of candies, and we are going to be writing this method, move candy to first row, which returns a Boolean. So let's look at some examples of how this would work. It says, in this following example, this grid that we have here uh, represents the contents of a box. An empty square in the grid is going to be a null. A non-empty square in the grid that represents a box element, it contains a candy object. And we saw the candy object, the candy class, on those previous slides. And you'll notice that it has a string associated with that particular object. And that's going to be the flavor that we get back when we call the get flavor method. So let's say I call the method move candy to first row zero in this example. Well, this is going to return false. Why? Because the box element at row zero, column zero, does not contain a piece of candy. And there are no pieces in column zero, that's the call parameter, right, that can be moved. So it's going to return false. The contents of the box are unchanged. What if we call move candy to first row one? So we're looking at column one now. Well, this is going to return true because the box element at row zero column one already contains a piece of candy. Nothing needs to be done. So the contents of the box are unchanged. Finally, what about if we say, let's call move candy to first row two. So we're looking at column two here. This is gonna want to move one of the other two pieces of candy in column two from where its current location is up to row zero. One of these could be cherry. So I could take cherry and I could shoop, move it up to row zero. Or, or we could take that grape candy and we could say, shoop, move it up to row zero in that same column as well. So either one would be fine. And it's going to, once it moves, that location is going to be set to null. 
and this is going to return true. You got to do the sound effects too when you do this at home by yourself. So here we go. Let's look at part A. It is the complete the move candy to first row method. We're going to move one piece of candy in column call if necessary and possible so that box element row zero column call contains a piece of candy as we just described. It returns false if there is no piece of candy in column call and returns true otherwise. The precondition is that call is gonna be a valid column index in box. So here's our method header, public Boolean move candy to first row with the column parameter. Go ahead and give this a shot and we'll get the, look at the canonical in just a moment. Okay, all right, here we go. So here's a canonical solution. And let's kind of just step through this briefly before we look at it to see how we implemented this algorithm. So we know we've got this parameter call and that's gonna be the column that I'm gonna be focusing on. Well, first of all, I look at row zero. So if box zero call, that's uh, row zero, column call. If it's not null, if there's already a piece of candy there, return true, don't have to do anything. I can stop and leave. If it's not, we're gonna continue. So now what am I gonna do? Well, now I've got to loop through all of the different rows in that column. Notice I'm starting at row one. I could have started at row zero again, but I already know it's null. So if you started at row zero, no harm, no foul, right? I'm starting at row one. I'm going to loop through while row is less than box.length and then row plus plus. And if I ever find a piece of candy in that column, so if box row call is not equal to null, then what am I going to do? I've got to move it up. I've got to move it up to row zero. How do I do that? Well, it's a three line standard swap, right? So box zero call equals box row call that puts the candy up into that box. It sets the old location equal to null and then it returns true. But if I loop all the way through, so now I've left, right? If I did that, but if I loop all the way through and I've never found another piece of candy in that column, it's gonna leave and return false. Let's look at the scoring for this. Part A is worth four points. First, did you access all necessary elements of column call of box with no bounds errors? Did I go through all of the rows in column call by starting either at zero or one? Notice the canonical started at one. And did you say box row column? So you access some element and you went through with no bounds errors. Got a point for that. Did you compare an element at row zero and column call to null? That's that first check, right? It was already a piece of candy there. If it is, great. Did you check for that? Did you identify and move an appropriate candy object to the first row if necessary. Well, this is our algorithm. So if necessary, meaning there wasn't a piece of candy there and did you go through, find a piece and then go ahead and do that swap where the candy gets moved up to that spot. If you did, great, that's the algorithm. And then finally, did you return true when not empty square is identified and false if a not empty square is not identified in the context of a loop? That's where we return true if it was already filled and we return true if we swapped a piece of candy up there and we return false if we just couldn't fill that particular position because there was no candy in that column. And that's part A. How'd you do? Rob, well, I'm gonna turn part B over to you. Okay, thanks, Tim. So yeah, let's take a look at part B. Let's take a look at that remove next by flavor method. And it says the remove next by flavor method is gonna to attempt to remove and return one piece of candy from the box. But we have some specific rules that we need to deal with. The first thing that it says is that the piece of candy to be removed is the first piece of candy with a flavor equal to the parameter flavor. So we're looking now for a specific flavor that we wanna remove. And then it goes on to say, it's the first piece of candy with the correct flavor that's encountered while traversing the candy box in the following order. So this is where we have to read pretty carefully. Instead of doing a standard traversal where we just start at the first row and work across and then the next row and work across, it says that we're gonna start in the last row of the box first and go from left to right. And then the next to last row is traversed from left to right and et cetera. So we're, we're doing this a little bit different and we have to pay attention to that. Okay, and we continue to traverse in that way until either a piece of candy with the desired flavors found or until the entire candy box has been searched without finding anything. It says if the remove next by flavor method finds a candy object with the desired flavor, the corresponding box element is assigned null, all other box elements are unchanged, and the removed candy object is returned. Otherwise, the box is unchanged and the method returns null. Okay, and we've got some examples. It says we've got three examples that call remove next by flavor. And again, it says the traversal of candy box always begins in the last row and first column of the box. Okay, so here's our first example. We've got this grid that shows the contents of box before any of the remove next by flavor methods are called. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do 
is we're going to say, okay, well, let's call remove next by flavor with cherry. And what it's going to do is it's going to return and remove the candy object located in row two, column zero, because we're starting in the last row, the first column, and we're working our way across. Well, the first element we look at is going to be a cherry candy object, which is the one we want to remove. So it's going to return cherry and it's going to set, whoop, sorry, I didn't get the sound effect. It's going to return cherry and it's going to set that element to null. In our next example, we have a call remove next by flavor with lime, which is going to return which one? Well, let's look. We've got to traverse row two. We're going to work our way across. Then we're going to traverse row one because we didn't find anything in row two. And as we move left to the right, we're going to find a lime candy object in row one, column three. So here we go, Zip. there it goes. We've just removed that one, we've set it to null, and that lime candy object is gonna be the one that's returned. And then finally, we've got a third example where we're gonna say the method call remove next by flavor with grape is gonna return null because, okay, if I start in row two and work left to right, and then I go up to row one and work left to right, and then I go to row zero and work left to right, notice there are no grape candies left in there. Those must be Tim's favorite, he already ate them all. So we're going to return null at this point because no grape flavored candies found and the contents of the box is going to be left unchanged. So let's let's take a look at how this works. So um, here we go. We've got our complete, the remove next by flavor method. We've got some comments that just kind of give us a reminder. We're going to remove from box and return a piece of candy with flavor specified by the parameter, or we're going to return null if no such piece is found as we just described in part B. So take a second and pause. Go out and try and work this through. See if you can come up with a solution. And when you're ready to go, press play and we'll work through it together. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look. So here's our canonical solution. So we've got our method header, public candy, remove next by flavor. We've got the string parameter flavor. Okay, so take a look at what we've got up here. The first thing we're kind of looking at is we've got our nested for loop to do our array traversal. But notice this one's a little different. Instead of doing a tra traditional traversal where we start row at zero and work through all of the rows from zero to the end and columns within that from, from columns to the end, because our rules are a little different, we have to start at the last row. We're going to initialize row to box.length minus one. We're gonna traverse while row is greater than or equal to zero. And we're gonna move from the back to the front by decrementing row every time we go through. Inside, as, as we look at each row, then we're gonna look at columns and we're gonna take our columns left to right. We're gonna go from column zero up to box zero, you know, our, our row dot length. And because we're dealing with rectangular arrays, every row is gonna have the same number of columns. So we can check box zero for the number of columns we've got and we're gonna increment as we go. Now, once we get inside the for loop, we have to do a quick check. Notice before we even look for a flavor, we have to check and see if there's a candy object at the specific row and column we're looking at. Well, why do we have to do that? Well, if every element where there's no candy object is null, and I'm looking at a null element and I try and call get flavor, we're going to throw an exception. We can't do that. So we have to make sure that we're protecting and make sure that there's actually a candy object in the element we're looking at before we can call get flavor. So we're going to check and make sure we've got a candy object. If we have a candy object, then we'll get the flavor and see if it equals our flavor parameter. And if it does, okay, now take a look at what we're doing. We're going to take our candy object and store it kind of in a special place off of the side in this candy object called taken. And then we're going to set the element at row column equal to null. And then we're going to return taken. And we have to be careful about that. We can't just return the element at box row column because then once we return, we, we wouldn't be able to set row column equal to null. So we've got to make sure we're kind of protecting ourselves and preparing for that and doing those steps in the right order. After we return taken, then the box is, is set. We're good to go. But if by some chance we traverse the entire box, we go through every row, every column, and we don't find a candy object that matches the flavor we're looking for, then down at the bottom, there's our return null because we didn't find anything. Let's take a look at our points and see how the points are scored for this one. So point number five, says that we traversed box in the specified order, starting from bottom to top, left to right, with no bounds errors. Well, we've got that. Here's our nested for loops. And notice it says as we traverse, we have to make sure that we're accessing an element inside box. So it's not enough just to have the for loops. We have to make sure we're accessing an element in there too as we work our way through. So we've got no bounds errors, we get 0.5. Here's this point where it says we guard against a method call on a null element of the candy box. And it has to be in the context of an if statement. So this is what we just talked about. We've got to make sure that there's a candy object there before we can call get flavor. If there's no candy object, we can't call get flavor because we don't want to throw an exception. Let's take a look at number seven. So uh, point seven says we call get flavor on a candy object. Well, we're, we're doing that. We're getting the element at, at position row column and we're calling get flavor. So we get point seven. Once we have that flavor, we're comparing it to flavors parameter. So we're good to go there. We get point eight. 
And then do we replace the first matching candy object with null and return the replaced object? So this is our algorithm point. We are, we're taking the element that we found that matches the flavor we're looking for and we store it to taken. We set that element equal to null and then we return taken to make sure that we're returning the correct candy object. All right, well, hey, it's been a pleasure working with you and best of luck on the exam. Everybody have a great day.